Hello, welcome everyone to this afternoon's webinar, which is about LinkedIn. We have Emily Miller. Hi, Emily. Hello, how are you, Mena? And uh, hello to everyone out there in webinar land. Hi, Emily. Yes, I'm fine. We've got lots of people and people joining us all the time. So um, hopefully everybody will enjoy the webinar today. Um, I just want to say to people, if they haven't used this software before, that if you want to ask a question, there should be a little box that you can type your question in. And I will ask Emily your question when it is a convenient moment. I don't generally read out the name of the person who's asked the question. So if you want to send an anonymous question, don't worry about it. I'm not going to ask um, anyone's names or out anyone. Um, throughout the webinar, Emily has prepared a number of polls. So I'm going to launch the polls and you'll have a facility to vote X Factor style. So please do join in um, and vote. We're not voting anyone off though, Emily, you'll be pleased to hear. <laughs> Hopefully not me. No, not you. You're the speaker. Um, and so we're going to start and I'll hand you over to Emily and she can explain what the webinar today is about. It's one hour CPD if you're still using the point system to claim CPD and you are a lawyer, um, then the CPD should come in handy. Thanks. Over to you, Emily. Okay, wonderful. Uh, hello, everyone. And the topic for today is surprise, surprise, is is LinkedIn worth your time? Uh, time is money, literally, uh, if you're a solicitor, and so there's no point in spending time on any tool or channel that really does not help you raise your profile and help you build your firm. So let's just get started. Here's a little bit of information about me. Um, I've been a LinkedIn trainer and coach since 2010. My background is in professional services, marketing and business development. And my partner, Susan Kench, has a history of around 15 years in uh, legal marketing. So we work together to help people in professional services and financial services use LinkedIn. Um, you may realize or notice that I don't have a British accent. I'm actually from Kentucky, so uh, bourbon and fried chicken, that's where I'm from. Uh, but I moved here to get my MBA at the London Business School and I stay. So I've been here a long time and this is my home. Also, we created two products. Number one is an online training course for lawyers uh, that is subscriber based. And we've recently written a book about how lawyers can use LinkedIn by, by having a fantastic profile grow their practice. And that's directed at lawyers, isn't it, Emily? The book? It, it is. It's only, it's for lawyers, oh, yes. Okay. And there are lots of good examples in there of profiles, questions, and case studies. So Great. Um, I won't uh, do any more advertising. <laughs> <laughs> so th we're going to talk about the value of LinkedIn, or maybe you'll decide it's not worth your time, and that's a completely valid opinion. Uh, we're going to look at LinkedIn profiles, give you some tips, talk about LinkedIn groups, and then take Q&A. But of course, like Mena said, if you do have a question, just post it in the chat area now, and I'm sure we can fit it in as we go along. Okay, there are now actually 400 million people on LinkedIn, uh, and they're in every country you can think of, in about uh, 200 different countries or territories, and over 20 languages. So if you're looking to grow your network globally, LinkedIn is absolutely key. Two people per second are joining LinkedIn. Okay, now we're ready for a poll. So do you have a LinkedIn account? Okay, I'm just going to launch that poll. So everybody, vote now. Do you have a LinkedIn account? So this if you... Really <laughs> ah, lots of people voting. Oh, yay. Okay, I'm going to give everybody another 10 seconds to vote. Uh, oh, it looks good. You've got some people to convert, Emily. So it's 77% yes and 23% no. Ooh, how about that? Well, that's good. I think if you don't have an account, this is, this is perfect because now you can make a decision whether it's worth your while or not. And the reason I have not sure is some people do have LinkedIn accounts, uh, but they might not even know about it. They accidentally signed up. They clicked on something and then... I'm telling you, it can get a little confusing. So uh, if anybody has any questions and you think you might have an account or you might not, please do get in touch and I'll, 
uh, search for you and see if you do. Okay. And that's because and sometimes it's... employers set up accounts, don't they, for employees, so that there are kind of they... these ghost accounts yeah. hanging around. They do, or you might get an invitation uh, from someone that is on LinkedIn, and you click on you want to connect with them, but maybe you don't realize you're actually setting up an account. Okay. And, and you set up account, and then you never look at it, and you've forgotten about it. Okay. It happens. And the second question. Okay, I'll if launch you, that, and people can vote on that now. If you if you do have an account, do you think you are using it to its full advantage? Well, that's also interesting, Emily. I'll give people another three seconds to vote, um, but I think you're going to be surprised at what people say, Emily, because 100% oh. of the people say no, they do not think they're using it at its full advantage. Wow, 100%. Yep. Gosh, that's amazing. Well, again, hopefully you've come to the right place to learn some things that can help you start taking full advantage. So that's brilliant. I'm really glad you're all here. Okay? Let's look at LinkedIn. So who is on LinkedIn anyway? Okay? You all know, or maybe you don't know, so I'm just going to, if I say something and you don't understand what I'm talking about or I'm not clear, please do put a chat in. Yeah? Because this is for you. And if you don't understand it, that's my fault. So please do ask the question. First of all, LinkedIn is an online networking site, and around 80% of the people on LinkedIn do influence business decisions. Now that doesn't mean they're an MD. That would be 80% would be um, kind of a crazy number for, you know, 80% uh, of 400 million MDs. But they do influence what happens in a business. Um, if you're looking to connect with executives in larger companies, their Fortune 500 or FTSE 100, they're all on LinkedIn. And for a lot of you, I may be making an assumption here, but if you work with small to medium-sized enterprises, over 50% of the companies represented on LinkedIn are in that sector. Okay. Now, just so you know, around 20 million, so it's 400 million worldwide, 20 million people in the UK are on LinkedIn. Wow. Okay. So, uh, and this is a really interesting piece of uh, research that HubSpot produced, and that is members are nearly 50% more likely to purchase from a company they're engaging with on LinkedIn. So what that means is, if you have a client or a prospect and you're connected with them on LinkedIn and you interact with them, when they have a problem that you can solve, they'll be 50% more likely to call you than your competitor. Why is this? It's because you're staying very gently, so not calling them every day or even a week or every month, you're very gently staying top of mind with them. So I say, oh, yeah, oh gosh, I've got that problem. Oh, oh I saw that post she did or he did. Or, oh yes, we're connected on LinkedIn. Let me just ask them this question and see. So that's how it works. Okay? Now, um, we did some research on LinkedIn just to see how many managing directors and CEOs are on LinkedIn, and this is in the UK. So you can see um, over 356,000 managing directors or CEOs. Now I should have a poll saying, is this of interest to you? A general counsel, uh, 2,500, and company directors, board members, board chair, uh, over 45,000. So hopefully this has shown you that the pond that you want to be fishing in is on LinkedIn. So the question is, are you going to actually engage with that pond or not? That's what you need to decide. Now, um, there's been some research that was done, this is in 2011 actually, by a company called BTI, about how legal services are now sourced. Okay. As you all know, um, it's always been peer-to-peer -peer referrals. So you know someone and say, oh, you know, I'm looking for a good solicitor to help me with this. Who do you know? Yeah. That's always happened through the ages. But now there is a second step that many people are taking, and that's an online search. So let's say, Mena, I'm looking for a family solicitor, and I'm, I've given your name. Yep. What would I do? The first thing I would do is search for your name on Google. Yeah. Do you do that, Minna? 
I search my name all the time, Emily. I'm sure I'm sure those people who know me are not surprised at all. <laughs> I mean I mean, do you ever search for <laughs> if you're if you're looking for services, do yeah. you ever search for a person? I, yeah. <laughs> I of course I do. I'm constantly I constantly um search I search solicitors that I'm working with to see sure. uh, what accreditations they have and what memberships yeah. they belong to. Are we members of any groups and I think it helps to break the ice if you're introducing yourself to to somebody new I I, I think yes. you know Google is a fantastic way and LinkedIn um, yeah. to find out what people are like and, and what they've done and what do you have in common yes absolutely now just so everyone knows on the webinar I did not pay Mena to say that okay? <laughs> so you know anyway so uh, now it's a two-step process you find a person's name and then you do an online search of their name okay uh, what would be really interesting for you to do after this webinar is Google your name. So if you do that, where does your LinkedIn profile sit? Okay. So I can almost guarantee you it will be on the first page. So people will have, and, and your website might be on the first page too. So people will have an option, and you have no control over what they're going to click on. So will they click on your name, or will they click on your firm first? Well, uh, a lot of people, because in legal services as well as other professional services, people buy people. So I'm very curious about that specific person that's been recommended to me. So I would probably look at their LinkedIn profile and then go to the website. So what you need to think about is when they look at your profile on LinkedIn, does it represent you well enough? that you get the call instead of if they're given another name are they going to look at them on LinkedIn they have a better profile they get the call so are you positioning yourself well enough so you get the call on LinkedIn so how can you use LinkedIn you can use it to meet your professional goals so if you think about your practice and how much of your business is through let's say uh, repeat clients and many of the clients that we talk to within the sector say that 80% of their business comes from regular clients. Okay, 20% is new. Now, a lot of you will think, oh, LinkedIn is where I can find new business, and that's true, you can. But it's also a great platform for deepening those key business relationships so you stay top of mind and they don't look elsewhere. It's just keeping in touch in a gentle way. So you can use it to deepen those key client relationships. Also, you can use knowledge to become your client's trusted advisor. So let's say you're an employment solicitor. Let's say you're posting uh, various updates on what's happening in the news and in the law concerning employment law. Uh, your connections, especially if you're connected to your clients, will really appreciate seeing that. So it's a great way to raise your profile as a go-to key expert on your field of expertise. And you can use the network to get more referrals. So if you think, oh, well, most of my business comes through referrals. Well, I, I would say most solicitors would say that. Uh, LinkedIn offers you a way to actually explore the connections and the clients that you have now and look for key people that you would like to be referred to. So it can help you increase your referrals and it can help you develop and pursue opportunities to win work. Uh, we'll look at groups um, and it may be whenever you receive invitations to connect, you can actually get work through dealing with your invitations to connect. And you may spot marketing or profile raising opportunities within a LinkedIn group, on, on a LinkedIn post. You never know, you will find things where you can really raise your profile. So, okay, let's talk about your LinkedIn profile now. Okay, I don't know if you have LinkedIn open at the moment. Those of you that have an account, uh, you may want to do that later or now, but um, make sure you have an all-star profile. These are the things you need to have on your profile in order to have an all-star. Now, I'm just going to go to LinkedIn so you can see where that is, okay? So here I am, here's my profile, and look, here's the all-star icon. Now, does this mean that I'm just absolutely amazing, uh, you know, my profile is, you know, uh, you know, 
really amazing. I don't know what the word is. Superstar. I'm you're to you're an oh, you're LinkedIn superstar. superstar. There you go. Thank you, Minna. Thank you, Minna. Um, it doesn't mean that. What it means is that you've ticked the basic boxes that you've put in your industry, your postcode, you've got a photo, you've got uh, three positions listed, you have your education, those things you just saw on that slide. And you will get a PDF. It's attached to this webinar. So yes. you will get the slides, everybody. Yeah, so, so you just okay. need to download the slides. It's in the handout section. It's a PDF. Just download it now, um, as Emily has reminded you. Otherwise, you won't get a chance at the end. Okay, so that's a, uh, it's a good thing to do. Now, um, this is a good opportunity to talk about photos. Okay, just so you know, when you want to change something on your LinkedIn profile, all you have to do is put your cursor over the section you want to change, and you see little pencils come up. And then you just click on them to change. Okay? But your photo, you may think, is not important. Actually, it's extremely important. If you have a photo on your LinkedIn profile, your, proto, your, your profile will be looked at 11 times more than someone who does not have a photo. We are very visual as humans, and we connect with faces. That's the way it's always been. And remember, LinkedIn is an online networking site. Okay, So let's say you went to a networking event wherever you're based, and you walked in the door, and you had a bag over your head, and you tried to start conversations. I don't think anybody there would want to talk to you, actually. Mm -hmm. They might even run from you. So just think about it. If you think of this as networking, you'll understand LinkedIn a lot better because that's what it is. So it shouldn't be a photo of you getting married or on the beach or in the pub or um, sometimes you see people who have taken an image and let's say they're, they're in a group of people and uh, they just crop the image so it's just them, but you see somebody's arm around their yeah. shoulder, you know, those sorts of things. Let's don't do that, okay? Uh, it's important to have a photo that represents you as your clients would like to see you because this is always a question. So how should I look on LinkedIn? Number one, I would say it needs to be mostly a headshot because let's say um, I, I'm looking for a family solicitor. I, it would really help me if I know what that person looks like before I meet them. So when they come out of their office to meet me, I'll know it's them. Yeah. Whereas if you're way, way far away and I really can't see what you look like much, then that's not helping me. Yeah. So it just helps every meeting to start a little bit warmer because you know what the person looks like. I mean, it's, it, that's simple. Okay. So make sure that you have an all-star profile if you uh, are on LinkedIn. And uh, if you don't have an all-star profile, that means if someone's searching for what you do, your profile will come lower in searches. So that's another reason to have an all-star profile. So you come higher in searches. I'm just going to go back to the PowerPoint. And you need to have 50 connections and at least five skills. Now, we're going to talk about skills in a minute. So for those of you that have questions about skills, please do put them in. Now, uh, keyword optimization. Okay, um, I've seen lots of solicitors who have underneath their name. This is your headline. Do you see the yellow bit there? Yeah. That's the headline. So if I'm doing a search for, let's say, an employment solicitor, at, I'm doing a search. So I've got a list of all the employment solicitors uh, that are near me in LinkedIn. Okay. All I will see is that headline. What's in yellow? So if it says family solicitor, then partner at XYZ, at least I know that that's what you specialize in, and I'll probably be much more likely to click through and look at you than a solicitor that just says partner. Okay. Because I know you probably, well, maybe you don't agree with me, but our attention spans are have gotten so short. Yes. Um, and if we don't find what we want immediately, we click off. I agree with you, Emily. But it's so easy to forget to put that you are a family specialist or an employment yes. specialist and just put solicitor or partner and forget yes. that people don't necessarily know. They might, if you've got a very common name, they might look at your name and think, well, I'm not sure if this is the person who was recommended to me. I'll go somewhere else. Yes, absolutely. So it really is important to have it right there 
easily seen. I think one of the best rules of marketing is make it very easy for a client or prospect to find you. Really easy. And if you don't have that information here, you're making it harder because they have to click through and look at your profile before they find out they're family solicitors. So it's important. Now, you use keywords throughout your profile. So let's see here. I'm just gonna we're gonna talk about endorsements, but I'm just gonna go to LinkedIn for a second and show you something. Uh, this is, I think it's a pretty nifty tool. Let's see if I can do it without screwing up. But um, now, if you've got a, a PC, you can click on uh, Control and F. So I'm just going to do that. And do you see this field that's come up right here? Yeah. Okay. So, and if you have a Mac, it's Command and F. So if you do this, and I'm going to search for a keyword in my profile, okay? Yeah? Yeah. So I'm looking. So think about what your keywords are. This is crucial. Even right now, I suggest you write down three top keywords or phrases that a prospect would use to search for what you do on Google. Okay? Mine is obviously LinkedIn, isn't it? Yeah. Okay? So I've typed in LinkedIn. And LinkedIn on my profile is seen 85 times. So anyone searching on LinkedIn for, let's say, LinkedIn training, will my profile, if everything else is equal, should come very high. And that's Control and F, did you say, Emily, or if it's a PC? It is. Thank it you. Is. Control and F. So you've got those keywords. Type them into that area and see how many times they come up in your profile. Okay? So if your That's keywords if your keywords only come up two or three times, then you basically want to go through your profile and amend it, don't you? Yes, you want to pepper it. Okay. Now let me just say something here. Okay. Um, if you're going to do something on your LinkedIn profile and you don't want people getting notices that, oh, Emily looks like she has a new job, but oh no, she doesn't. She's working for the same company. She just tweaked her LinkedIn profile a little bit. If you don't want people to get updates showing you're doing that, whenever you work on your LinkedIn profile, please go here and slide it to no. So see what it says? Notify your network? No. Do not publish an update to my network about my profile changes. But a LinkedIn normally has this set as yes. So every time you tweak your profile, your connections. Now, this is not an individual email going out to everybody you know. Just let's be clear about this. It will show up on the home page that, you know, I've added this or I've added that. But if you want to avoid that, you set it as no. But let's say you've just joined a new firm. What I would do is set this as yes, add the new firm, an update goes out, and then you may want to click it back here so you because this is easy to forget to do before you start doing things. Okay? Good. So uh, let's just talk about keywords and peppering. So, <clears throat> you know, if I had here in my summary, let me show you what my profile looks like to those who view me. This is in edit mode. So I view profile as, okay, this is the way people see it when they look at me, like if you look at me. Okay? Um, if I just had the word LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn a hundred times, would you be impressed with that? I mean, I would be keyword optimizing it, wouldn't I? But what would you think? You think I'm a little bit um, uh, maybe over the top? Yeah, it's I think just... absolutely. You, it would be insane. And you would know the reason that somebody has done that is just a keyword optimizing. It doesn't make any sense. Exactly. So, it, again, think of it as networking. You want your keywords in there. But you, it has to be readable. Um, you know, don't go up to someone in a networking event and just say LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. <laughs> you know, so so really, it has to be readable and engaging. So do pepper it, but let's go through it. So I've got it in my summary. This is where you set out what you do, the software services you offer, and then what you want people to do. See, this in marketing terms, this is called a call to action. So you put in what you want people to do when they look at you. So I've got. You can go to the website and get a free copy of um, um, this little report we've got. Okay, I've added some uh, visuals, so that's a video. 
and this is an image, not very good one, of me doing some LinkedIn training. Uh, there's a book, so sometimes you can move things around on your profile. Um, but uh, so I moved that up so you can see it right here. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to go down. I'm going to actually go in to return to your profile so I can show you. Um, going to show us the um, recommendations that you were talking about earlier. Yes, yes. So if I scroll down, here we go. So here are skills and endorsements. So. Um, Make sure those keywords you wrote down, are they here? You need to have at least five to have a, an all-star profile. It's good to have at least 10, I would say, but a LinkedIn, you can have 50. And back in the old days, <laughs> uh, you know, it was a good thing to have as many as possible because it was just more keywords. So that's why I have all these, and I just left them. Okay. But LinkedIn, once you've got your skills listed, you can move them around. Because look, I've got 99 um, endorsements for marketing strategy. I mean, that's something I know about, but I want to be known for these things. Okay. So I've moved it. And all you do is go to add skill and see, move them around like that. Somebody on my profile somehow uh, managed to endorse me for being a vegetarian, Emily. Ah! Which was <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> That can be annoying. <laughs> I, I've heard of somebody who did it to a, a friend about uh, teeth brushing, so that okay. that's a little bit crazy. <laughs> but I'll, what you can do is you go to Add Skills. So look, um, so you can't see Add Skill till you put your cursor over here. Okay. That, I know that's annoying. It's good for me because people get confused and can't find anything. But uh, so go over here and you click on Add Skill. Then you find being a vegetarian, Mena. Yeah. And you just get rid of it. Now, okay. just so you know, whenever you click on the X, you're deleting it, and you're deleting the endorsements too. Sure. Okay, just so you know that. But there's no point in being endorsed for something that's not important. For example, if you're a partner of a law firm, and someone has endorsed you for, let's say, PowerPoint, uh, I would probably take that off. Yeah. You know, at that level, that's not a skill that people are going to hire you for. So just think about where you are in your uh, position in your career and have the right skills listed. Okay. Now, recommendations. If we go down, so here are my recommendations. Shall I just talk about what what the difference is? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, an endorsement or a skill is just a one word or a key phrase, and people just have to click. And Minna, do you mind if I go to your profile to show them how to do that? No, that's fine. Okay, good. Um, so that's where you just click and then you endorse someone. And you have to be connected to them to endorse them, okay? Just so you know that. A recommendation is where somebody has written something about you. So that's a lot harder. But I'll... I, I'll bet that all of you out there probably have testimonials from clients. You can easily get those posted. You just have to go through a little process. So you can't post it yourself like this. You have to ask them to post it. So let me show you how to do that. But first, I'm going to go to Mena's. Okay. So One of the things here, that I'll mention then, while you're doing that, Emily, is that people um, click that endorsement button very easily because you get suggestions, yeah. don't you? Yes, you do. Now, they haven't come up for you at the moment, but they may a little bit later. It will say, oh, endorse Mena for this and that. I never do that because, number one, uh, I only endorse people for skills I know about. Okay, So people will endorse you for skills they don't have a clue about. That's happening. But yeah. I, I really recommend that you don't do that. But protect your reputation. Endorse people for skills that you actually know about. So, Mena, what I would do, I wouldn't look at what LinkedIn is suggesting for you. I would scroll down to your skills right here, and here's where I would endorse you for what I know you want to be known for, sure. like family law. I, so, you know, think about the person you're connected to. What do they want to be known for? Go down to their profile, to this section, and endorse them for what that, and they will really appreciate it instead of just doing what LinkedIn suggests. Or go, if you scroll all the way down, you can see my one endorsement for being a vegetarian. You shouldn't click on that one because that's probably Oh, yeah. that's well, let's probably don't not, do that. <laughs> that's it, probably it not the best one. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm looking for vegetarian. There it is. Oh, I've got two endorsements for being a vegetarian. There I am, right in the middle. Vegetarian, vegetarian. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't oh realize I had two endorsements for being a vegetarian. Well, that's saying something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. So uh, hopefully that's pretty clear about what you need to do in order to endorse people. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you how to get recommendations or to out how to ask for them. Okay, you go to your profile and there's this little drop down menu right there and you click on ask to be recommended. Okay? And this will you say what do you want to be recommended for? And so you pick what you want to be recommended for, who do you want to ask and so on and so forth. So off you go. Uh, and they do offer you a template for asking for a referral. Don't do that. Absolutely don't do that. It can be um, embarrassing for people, though, Emily, to ask, um, potentially in family law, you know, ask your clients for recommendations because then your whole network will see that, you know, this is somebody you endorse. So sometimes clients might be a little bit um, backwards oh, and coming be. forwards and they might not be happy, but that's that's their choice. What I would say, if, uh, and if you're a family solicitor, it's, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Because, you know, you're working in a very personal sphere. And uh, so I would think twice about that. If they want to recommend you, that's great. But I would probably have a conversation with them face-to-face -face and see if they're comfortable with it. But for the rest of you, let's say you're a, a litigator and, you know, a deal's already been done and you did a great job and now you love a recommendation, I would do what I just showed you how to do, but then I would say, hi, you know, you said this about me in an email, here it is right here, would you mind copying and pasting it so I can have it on my LinkedIn profile, so sure. provide it for them, but always say at the end, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Because the last thing you want to do is to make any business relationship awkward with a client. Yeah. So always give people a way out. That way, if, if they don't feel comfortable doing it, it's, it might not be a personal thing at all. They just don't want to do it for whatever reason. Yeah. You haven't, you know, kind of pushed them in a corner where they're going to be embarrassed the next time they see you. So always think about, um, is this building the relationship or is it not? And always work towards building. And in fact, when I'm when I'm working with other solicitors, if I look at their LinkedIn profile, I'll look at those personal recommendations, and usually they're from experts or people they're working with or people they've worked for before. Generally, you don't get those from clients. You'll find those generally on um, uh, anonymized on their website, and you'll see what their clients have said about them, um, exactly. and that's fine. Yes, it is absolutely fine. Okay, so we've talked about that, and now let's just cover this. So raising your business profile. Um, for those of you that are, you know, know LinkedIn really well, this is going to be a little bit boring for you, but it's really important. And that is here you are. Do you see where you are there at the, the left-hand side? Yep. Uh, and when you connect with somebody, those people become your first level or first degree connections. Okay? Well, good. Okay. Now your second degree connections or second level are people that you are not connected to, but your first degree connections are. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then third level or degree are the connections of your second degree. Okay? So why is this important? It's because let's say there you are and you've connected with your clients. Now you need to ask yourself, do you think that your current clients might know and be connected to potential clients? We should do a poll about that. We haven't, but <laughs> what is the answer? What would the answer be? Yeah, probably the best way to word of mouth um, connections is a, is a good way forward. Exactly. So if you're connecting to your clients, then potential clients will be much more likely to see you because LinkedIn searches, you know, we talked about keywords, mm -hmm. endorsements and recommendations do affect your ranking as well. But one of the most important things is this. And whenever you do a search, the people that you're most closely uh, linked to, that's your first, second, and third, will show up first. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking for a family lawyer, 
and I'm connected to let someone someone who's connected to a family lawyer, then when I do a search for family lawyer, then that person, that second degree to me, will come up and I'll say, oh, I see X knows that. Uh, maybe I should ask her um, something about that mm. particular solicitor and then give them a call. So uh, the moral of this story is do connect with your clients, but if you're in family law, that's a little bit different and I would probably wait for them to connect with you or have a face-to-face -face conversation about it, make it really low-key and low-risk and not awkward for them. Okay. So, but what you could do as a family solicitor is connect with influencers. So people who influence the decision of people who go to a family solicitor. Sure. So whether that's an IFA or it could be an accountant. Think about those people. Okay. Yeah. Now let's just go over LinkedIn etiquette. It's obviously not Facebook. Always be professional. And we've already talked about this. Just you won't go far wrong if you just behave on LinkedIn the way you would behave in an offline networking event. Yeah. So, you know, uh, we're going to talk about a, a horror story in a minute. So, and think before you connect with people you don't know. We'll talk a little bit about this later. Always send personalized invitations, recommendation requests, and introduction requests. The reason being, if LinkedIn is a tool for building a relationship, why would you send them the template? So make that little bit of effort to grow that relationship. Obviously, don't think you have to post on LinkedIn five times a day. You do not. Okay. Think about if you see something interesting and you want to share, share it. And don't hard sell on LinkedIn. Just like in a regular networking event, if you, someone comes up to you and tries to sell to you, everybody backs away. And you remember that person and you remember to avoid them the next time. Yeah. And so just so, to be clear, hard selling is when somebody connects with you and then immediately sends you an email that says, hi, would you like to buy this or shall we have a conversation about you using my services? And that that's, happens that's quite hard. often. Yes. yes, it does. That happens, but it also happens in uh, status updates. Okay. You know, so we'll talk about status updates a little bit later for those of you who don't know what that means, but it's just posting uh, a short uh, update on what you're doing, but a lot of uh, some people, I know somebody who is in the payment uh, receipt sector. I didn't even know there was a sector around that, but every post that she did was about use our services for payment receipts. Okay. Use our services for payment receipts. That gets a little boring after a while. Mm -hmm. So it just doesn't work. Obviously, don't reveal any client or uh, company confidential information. Be polite, show tolerance, and, and do be you. Uh, don't think you have to use all uh, you know legal terminology on LinkedIn. You don't. Okay. So what not to do, okay? A lot of you might have heard this story already, but let's just go over it. Okay, Charlotte Proudman is a, a barrister. This is in all the news, so this is completely public. She was a barrister who sent an invitation to connect to Alexander Carter Silk. He accepted, and they didn't know one another, he accepted her invitation to connect. Then he emailed her saying this, Charlotte, delighted to connect. I appreciate this is probably horrendously politically incorrect, but that is a stunning picture. You would definitely win the prize for the best LinkedIn picture I've ever seen. Okay? So, um, she, she probably should have stopped at the delighted to connect and then left it at his name. If he'd said, Charlotte, delighted to connect, always interested to understand people's skills and how we might work together, that would have been perfect. Yeah. All right. But he brings this up now. Uh, she, he didn't look at her profile very carefully because she's actually a women's issues barrister. Yep. And she took great offense. You know, everybody has a different opinion about what should have been done and shouldn't have been done. But anyway, she took great offense at his uh, email. So she wrote back to him and told him uh, how terrible it was. And then she took a picture of what you see right there and her response and put it on Twitter. Now, this conversation on LinkedIn was happening in the private area. No one saw that. No one saw that, okay? Until she put it on Twitter. So what I'm saying to you is really be sensible, and I, I highly recommend that you read Minna's blog on lawyers and social media and ethics, uh, where she talks about how to behave. 
but really use your common sense and don't do anything that you uh, think your colleagues or your family would be embarrassed if they were standing right next to you and you said that. And it's really important to bear that in mind. So the blog that Emily mentioned is um, posted on Emily's website. So it's about um, ethics and social media. And it's about forgetting forgetting where you are. I think people who are on any type of social media sometimes forget where, they're, where they are and what they should be doing. So it's just a reminder mainly aimed at, at lawyers as to um, what they should bear in mind. Yes. Absolutely. It's to, it really it's common sense, but somehow sometimes that goes out the windows, out the window. Okay, a poll. Yay. Great. So. Okay. So we're going to launch this poll. Do you have an all-star profile? So now people should know what an all-star profile is. So I will give you a few seconds to vote. I'm again surprised at the um, voting. I think it's. Yeah, okay, I'm going to close the poll now, so if you voted, that's great. And so there are the results. So do you have an all-star profile? Uh, yes, 40%, and no, 60%, Emily. Okay, okay. And there, there might be a little work to be done at some point on your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Okay, good. And the next question? So I'm going to launch this one, and here we go. And do you think your LinkedIn profile represents you well? Um, yes, well, no, my photograph is out of date. I haven't had a, a, a new photograph done for a few years, so I don't think that particularly represents me the way that I am now, but at least it's professional. I'm closing oh, closing the voting now for everybody, and again, it's 40% yes and 60% no. So again, people realizing there that they um, perhaps want to have a, another look at their profile and update it probably. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's uh, super. And I, I would say that's not unusual for uh, people in other professional services. So you're not alone, everybody. Uh, there's a lot to be done. Okay, some LinkedIn tips for you. Okay, so deal with your LinkedIn invitations. Min and I were talking about this before. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure people but have you, noticed, Emily, that you have got lots of pending invitations. <laughs> exactly. This is where your invitations are, okay? So everybody knows that. And so if I click on see all, I've got 56 waiting for me. So you can tell, you know, um, I do, obviously I go through this, but I don't let it um, run me. Do, do you know what I mean when I say that? Because yeah. I could, you know, somebody sends me. So I think, okay, I'll take an hour or even 30 minutes or really on the weekend even. I'll just go through those and see if I need to connect to any of those people and then, Whereas I was saying, Emily, that I do mine every day. I don't have any kind of pending messages or I don't let things build up. So I'm completely the opposite. I spend maybe five minutes every morning while I'm drinking my coffee. Just, yeah, I just clear it every day. I, I, I don't like having those little red reminders. Yeah. Well, see, there you go. She's so great and a um, perfect uh, user of LinkedIn, and I knew need to do a better job here <laughs> on my, my own invitation. But okay, so here are the invitations, and I, if I go over this switch, oh look at that. Okay, so um, Freddie watched a webinar that I just did, and um, for a company called Passel, and so he wants to connect. So of course I would accept that. That's really lovely of him. So you can look and see what people say. Now this is the template. So he hasn't made any effort to say anything, so I, I don't know why he wants to connect with me. Maybe he wants LinkedIn training, maybe he doesn't. So go through these, and if it's a client, and I do know him, so I'll accept. Um, if it's a client, do accept, and then why not use that opportunity to write them a little note and say, hey, thanks for connecting. Um, I'm going to be in your neighborhood soon. Uh, let's get together for a coffee. Or how did that issue go? What's happening? Just It's an opportunity for you to keep on building that relationship. But let's say, for example, I, I don't know where he's based either. So let's say I'm not sure if I want to connect with him or not. Do you see this little arrow right there? Yeah? I can click on this. So if I'm not sure whether I want to accept or not, I can write him a message and say, thank you so much for your invitation to connect. I usually don't connect with people I haven't met or had an, oops, sorry, online uh, conversation with. Um, should we... Um, um, have we met? Do, have we met? Have, sorry, Are we going to lost myself because yeah. I was yeah. Have we met or can I help you? So I'm not connecting with him. 
I am, and I'm just going to get rid of these right here. That I, I didn't know that was up. I'm really sorry, everybody. That's so okay. sorry. Okay. So anyway, so uh, with him, I would say, uh, do you want? Why do you want to connect? And he'll come back to me and either tell me why, or he'll ignore it, and then I'm not connecting with him. So okay. you can either accept an email, you can ignore, or you can use this facility, which is called Reply. Don't accept yet. Okay. Okay. Emily, I'm just going to remind you that we are due to have a one-hour webinar and we have 15 minutes left. So if anybody has questions, this is a good time for questions um, and type them in and I will put your question to Emily in a minute. Okay. So stay in touch with your network. That's the easiest thing to do. So if we go to LinkedIn, uh, remember we talked about LinkedIn is a great place to stay in touch with people. Go here and you can see 15 ways to stay in touch. You can go through this and see if anybody you know has changed jobs. You can see what people are up to. Feel free to like and comment if you're interested in what they're sharing. Mm -hmm. Great way to stay in touch. Okay, if you have a client or prospect meeting and you want to learn more about the person, use advanced search. That's right here. I can go to advanced search. I can search for a person. I could search for a title. I can search by location, industry. This is such an amazing tool that many people are not using. So have a look at that and explore it. Raise your profile. Okay, this is something men is doing really well. Let's just go to the home page. That's where this is. Here's the home page, and this is where you can share an update. Let's say I went to an event, uh, and I'd like to say, uh, or I'm going to an event. I'm going to be at um, some legal conference. If you're attending and you'd like to be, get in touch and have a coffee, please let me know. I can do that by clicking on this. I can upload a photo or I could publish a post. Now, if you publish a post, that stays on your profile. These disappear over a period of two weeks. These stay. So if I look at my profile, I just want to see where you can see where that sits. Here are my posts. So these never leave. So, and these are found by Google. They're highly ranked by Google. So people might find me through Google through these posts that I've written. It's like an article that are on my profile and stay there. So have a look at that. And that's a good way, as you were saying earlier, to share content. So if you are an employment lawyer and you want to let people know in your network about something new that's happened, that's a good place to put it so that people can access that information. Absolutely. And then here, remember we talked before about you can grow your database by having a call to action in your summary saying, you know, if you'd like to get in touch and download this, you take them to your website and you grow your database through using LinkedIn in a smart way. And LinkedIn groups. So, Mena, you've got a group right here we that have, people yeah. should join. That's right. So, how do you find this group? Okay. We go up here and the name is... It's Law CPD Solutions. CPD Solutions. And see, there it is right there. I click on it. <laughs> you click on it and nothing happens. <laughs> and, then, and, see, and then here, if you're not a member, it'll say join right here. And you just click on join. And I'm sure Mena will let you in. Yes. Okay. And we have conversations. Following our webinars, we have conversations on there, so we'll be posting a little thread and if people have questions after the webinar and you watch this on our YouTube channel, you can go to there and have a conversation and ask questions. Perfect. And I'm sure this is because you know Mena, this is a great place to go and you know, if you're a little bit wary of what to do in LinkedIn groups, yep. this is a good place just to dip your toes in Yep. Uh, because if, if you did something that Mena thought was inappropriate, I'm sure she would email you first and say, hey, you may want to tweak this or have you thought about it this way? So it helps you build your confidence on how to use LinkedIn groups. And I've got some tips for you. Great. So number one, don't just pop into a group and say, buy me, buy me. Uh, do provide links to interesting information. Ask questions uh, so, and provide thoughtful answers. Get involved in ongoing connection discussions. Um, a lot of people don't realize it, but if you just like and comment on existing discussions, that means you're not posting anything new, just whatever's in there already, your profile views will go up four times. So that's a good way to start, just liking and commenting on discussions you're interested in, obviously. Yeah. Okay? 
share meaningful information, and then let's say uh, you're in a LinkedIn group, someone posted something, you liked it, you commented on it, then let's say that person who posted that discussion is a potential client, then I think you would have every reason to then just send them an invitation to connect saying, really liked your discussion on LinkedIn, would you like to connect? Once you've done that, you have their email address, and then you can start growing that relationship and building on that conversation. A poll. Okay, great. This is going to be very interesting. So this is, are you a member of any LinkedIn groups? I have to say, I'm a, a member of about, I'm a member of about 10 groups. Um, and if you're a solicitor and you're listening, the Law Society um, Gazette has a group, which is very good, um, and, and that's a good place for discussion. So here we go. I'm sharing the results. So 86% of the people who responded said yes, they are, and 14% said no. And no, no people are not sure, so everybody who's responded knows what their answer is. Okay. And so we'll do the second poll. Do you actively participate? Now that's the question, isn't it? Because I would say um, I do dip in and out of conversations on LinkedIn yes. groups, um, but I'm not on there all the time. I might spend 10 minutes one one day a week at lunchtime looking and commenting. And uh, the, the answers are really interesting, Emily. I'm going to share that with you. Look at that. Um, do you actively participate? 100% of the people who answered said no, they don't. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. I and I people, do from time to time. Yes. And, and well, see, I would say you're an active uh, participator, actually, if you're doing it once a week and having a look and doing. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't because they're not sure what to do. And then maybe they're in groups where all the discussions aren't interesting or of value. Mm. Yeah. So I would say be in some peer-to-peer -peer groups for sure because you can ask questions and so on and so forth. But why not join some groups where your clients are? Yeah, so if you're, if you're a property solicitor, you might want to join some UK property groups. Yeah. And, see, and then maybe like and comment on those. So, but do it gently and build your confidence. But just say, it's like being in a room, in a networking room. That's what a LinkedIn group is. And there are discussions going on, and then you decide whether you want to get involved or not. And it's just like a normal conversation; it just happens to be online. But a little, a lot of people are a little uh, hesitate to do it, so that's sure. good to know. Two case studies, and then I think we're about done. Great. Um, I had a a, a client who reestablished, um, went on LinkedIn, reestablished relationships with all their old clients, mm -hmm. and didn't email them; just sent them an invitation to connect. They connected. And that person was an HR, well, uh, uh, employment solicitor. They were sharing updates about what's happening, law, and so on and so forth. And of course, that new connection, who was an old client, could see that mm -hmm. and was actually contacted to tender. Okay. Uh, and they won. So they did no hard selling, no anything. They were just there. And uh, when the tender opportunity came up, they remembered them because they were connected and did it. Givers gain. Okay, so in a LinkedIn group, you might have, let's say you have um, a, a checklist for employers on what to think about whenever you're hiring a new employee. You may want to put that in an HR group and say, I've got a checklist uh, that uh, says what you know to look out for when you're hiring. If you would like a copy, please let me know. I'd be happy to send it to you. And then if people say, yeah, send it to me, too. then you've got all those people that you can then send it to connect on LinkedIn, and hopefully continue the conversation. And Great. that can lead up to instructions. Okay, case two, this is where um, a client read an article about a, um, well, a company that was in trouble, um, looked on LinkedIn for the CEO's name, because <clears throat> that was mentioned in the article, uh, found out that a connection of his knew that CEO. He, asked, he called that person, got an introduction, got connected to the CEO via LinkedIn, and then had a conversation saying, oh, I noticed this in the news. You may want to think about these. The CEO came back and said, listen, thanks so much for getting in touch, but you've got it covered. Um, and so my client said, okay, that's fine, great, great to be connected. Good, done. And there was some more information about the company in the news. Emailed again, have you thought about this? I noticed this. Then the CEO said, oh, okay. 
actually, let's set up a meeting with the executive committee. I think we need to discuss this. And that happened, and he was instructed. Oh, that's great. So the story, the moral of that story is it, LinkedIn is not about, it's not a what hen wonder where, you know, you connect with somebody and suddenly you get lots of business. That might happen, but it's more of a slow burn, building yeah. that relationship. And you know that's how it works anyway. Yeah. So build your LinkedIn strategy. Set your goals. Get a profile that represents you well. Start connecting, engaging. And if you're not taking conversations offline, because that's where the business happens, something's not quite right and you need to tweak something, and then measure your results. And here's the last poll, I think. Yes. So I'm going to launch this last poll. Do you think LinkedIn is worth your time? Has Emily persuaded you that it's worth update, updating your profile, maybe getting a profile, um, changing your photograph, which is what I think I should do? I'll give you a couple of more seconds and I'll close that poll. Oh, we have a split group, Emily. Interesting. So we've either got 57% who say yes, LinkedIn is definitely worth their time, and 43% who are saying maybe. So no one is saying no, <laughs> but we're split between yes and maybe. I think that's great, and you know, um, it takes time to get. It's if you're not used to LinkedIn, it takes time to warm up to it. But uh, it's good to see that we have no more no's. And then what about the second one? I would say, though, while people are doing this second um, poll, which is now open, so do you have a LinkedIn strategy? I'm not allowed to vote in these polls, but I don't have a LinkedIn strategy, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. But I would say that I probably spend maybe five or ten minutes every day on LinkedIn, just on mm -hmm. my phone, scrolling through. Uh, I'm going to close that poll, and again, I'm really interested in the answers to these polls, and you will be too. So 100% of the people who voted say it's now on my to-do list. So and <laughs> I'll add my... I'll add my vote to that one. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. I, I would say to you, keep your strategy really simple. It may be, you know, you want to get two more referrals this quarter and two new clients. Make it simple. Yeah. And then work backwards. What do you have to do to achieve that? That's great. I like your poll, and Emily. <laughs> you, oh, thank you. A uh, beautiful car, for those of you that don't know what it is, it's a McLaren 12C, so designed by a British designer and manufactured in Woking, so it's brilliant. The reason I have it here is I hope you can see LinkedIn is a brilliant tool, but if you never get in it, it won't take you anywhere, <laughs> and if you don't know where you're going, it's not going to help you either. So really, just give it a go and, and see where it can take you, okay? Uh, I've already talked about this, so it's the book That's and your book, it's all all online. Things. and now Mena, it's your turn. And uh, hopefully uh, people will know who I am. So I'm Mena Rupal, I'm a family solicitor and director of Law CPD Solutions. Um, there, there are all those things that I do there. Um, we've got a new product which is on our online academy. So it's a bit like the online training that you offer, but our product is aimed at people to um, keep them up to speed with the new competence framework that solicitors are having to face which is becoming mandatory on the 1st of November so if you're interested in that visit my LinkedIn profile visit the LinkedIn group have a look at our website um, and have a look at Emily's website and if you've got any questions we haven't got any questions outstanding Emily but if people have questions afterwards then they can contact you they can contact me they can post a question on our LinkedIn group um, Absolutely. So there are lots of ways to get in touch with us Absolutely, absolutely. Listen, thank you so so much, Mena. I really enjoyed this, and um, I wish all of you uh, who've been listening the best of luck on LinkedIn. And if you if you'd like to, please do send me and Mena an invitation to connect. That's fantastic. Thanks very much uh, for your help, Emily. Just a reminder to the lawyers out there, you can claim one hour CPD uh, for attending this webinar. It's going to be posted on the Law CPD Solutions website and at sorry, our YouTube channel um, by the end of the week. Uh, so if you want to pass it on to any of your colleagues, please feel free to do so. Thanks very much for joining us today, Emily, and thank you for everybody who has stayed with us. I can see we've got almost a full group that stayed with us right to the end, so oh, thank you very much. Brilliant. Thanks, Emily. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye.